Today I have 100 feet of RG8X and 100 feet of RG174. I have a dummy load. I have a power meter. I have a ham radio. What I'm out here to do today is to show you how coax can make a difference. We're gonna put both of the coaxes out, hook them up to the dummy load and see how much power they actually transmit at 100 feet because of the loss. And the goal here with the coax is to show you the difference between something like RG8X and RG174 and the loss and why coax may, why coax does matter. I'm gonna set up and you could, you know, I'll be right back. Oh, and by the way, I, I do have a choke. 7,000 comments an episode, I have a choke. For my antenna, I have a dummy load. Then I have the power meter, and it's gonna go out 100 feet into the field, into my transmitter. I wanted to do this test on VHF and UHF, but I just at the moment don't have the equipment. We're gonna do it on 10 meters today, which will be somewhere around 5.5 dB of loss per 100 feet. When you're talking about the RG8X, I think it's around 3 dB of loss or 2.5 dB of loss per 100 feet. Regardless, here and here, these are the losses. And we're going to see if it makes a difference. Now, I will tell you, if you're going to go up to VHF and UHF on a coax like RG174, you're looking at something like a billion dB of loss. Now, it is only logical that of course, we have a control to test with, meaning we have a short piece of coax to make sure the radio is operating the correct wattage. So we have these two super bat jumper cables, one into the dummy load, then we go into the SWR meter. Oh, 93 watts. All right, a nice crooked SWR meter, of course. Here we are, we have set to HF, power's down. We have both of our wires in the back to the correct ports on HF, and then we have our cool dummy load. I'm going to walk my butt out there and I'm going to key up with the FT891. We're first using the RG8X. I am going to key up with the 891 on CW and or AM. I'll let you know as soon as I get back. Now this is where the fun begins, because I'm going to take the RG174 with 100 feet, and I'm going to replace the RG8X. And this is where we talk about the importance of coax, okay? You saw that at 100 feet with RG8X, only about 54 watts got to the radio. What do you think is going to happen with 174? I'm just experimenting the joy of amateur radio. <laughs> Now what does this all mean? If you haven't noticed, the longer coax runs you have, you're going to have more loss. And you can now see that it equates to power loss as well as other losses we can get into later. But if you still need a chart to see this and understand it, let me show you. But first, it's time for our comment of the week. Lose the sunglasses, dude. Today we're going to go ahead and pass the torch on to you. There you go. And when we're talking about coax, we have this little chart here which shows we started with RG142 and it was jumpers only. What if we reduced our power to only 50 watts of power? And that's when we start to see big changes. So yeah, 50 watts, 46 watts, not a bad deal because we're still on a jumper. But 20 watts, 18 watts, not a big deal. 10 watts, 9 watts, not a huge deal. If we were to take that same RG142 and make it 100 feet long, Oh, that's when we start to see some crazy things like 50 watts becomes 19 watts, 20 watts becomes 7.6 watts, 10 watts becomes 3.8 watts. Now think about that for just a moment. All of a sudden you think you're QRP when maybe you end up somehow becoming QRPP. RG8X, if we had 100 feet of that, think about that. 50 watts becomes 26 watts. 20 watts becomes 10 watts. And of course, 10 watts then becomes about 5.37 watts based on my experimentation today. Now, what were to happen if we had RG174 at 100 feet? 
well, maybe it's what we had available, but then we operate 50 watts and that only becomes 15 watts out. All of a sudden, 20 watts becomes 6 watts and 10 watts becomes 3 watts. And this doesn't even talk about, well, it doesn't even talk about our receive or RX, which, hey, guess what? If we have 5 dB of loss, for example, we're going to have 5 dB on the transmit and the receive, which then might mean we go from a signal being something like an S3 to possibly below S1. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what I hope to show to you here in the near future when it's a little bit warmer outside. But until then, I hope you have a good one. Go get yourself a pair of these shades and 73. Yeah, welcome to uh, Ham Radio Roadshow where it's freezing balls out here. Anyway, thanks for watching.